Hi everyone, this is Nancy Mahan, your instructor for uh, Math 110 and 130, beginning and intermediate algebra. Um, we are on the section on factoring a trinomial, and a lot of you guys mentioned that you were having problems with this, so I'm going to show you my way of doing it. On Alex, they have a certain way of doing it. Um, I think it's a little bit confusing, and there's if you go on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of different methods of factoring a trinomial. So there's several different methods, but I'm going to show you my method, which I personally like because it works every single time, no matter how simple or how hard the problem is. So um, I'm going to flip the camera real quick, real quick, and I'll show you what I do. All right, so how to factor a trinomial. The word trinomial means a polynomial with three terms, because tri means three. So if you think of a tricycle, it has three wheels, um, triad. Um, triceratops, um, the word, the root word is three in it. So this only, this method that I'm going to show you only applies to trinomials. So don't try this with a binomial or something that's four terms or five terms. It has to only have three terms. So let's look at this. I have a trinomial because of one, two, three terms here. So the method that I use is called the Xbox method. So how the Xbox method works is at first, make sure that the, your polynomial is written in standard form, meaning the highest exponent goes first and it goes down to its lowest. So make sure it's written in standard form. In other words, from the highest exponent down to the lowest. So highest x squared down to x to the, just the constants. And in Alex, um, in our homework, um, our homework program, it's always written in standard form, but in case you get a textbook or another teacher, she or he might write it a different way, so make sure it's in standard form. All right, now that's in standard form, the next step that you're gonna do is you're gonna find the factors of the first and third term. Find factors of the first and third term. So here, when I look at this, the first term is 2z squared, the last term is 30. So I'm going to ask myself, what two things multiply to give me 2z squared? And the answer is just 2z times z will give me 2z squared. There's no other options but 2z times z. Then I look at the last term and I say 30. What two terms or what two numbers multiply to give me 30? Well, there's obviously several different options. There's 6 times 5, right? 6 times 5 will give me 30. Other options are... Um, 15 and 2 will also give me 30. 10 and 3 will also give me 30. And also, if you flip these numbers upside down, say 5 and 6, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, those are also numbers that give me 30. So now what I'm going to do, these are what I call my lottery numbers. So these factors are called my lottery numbers, and only one pair will win. So let's find out which one will win. So how I find out which one will win, I do what we call X. So the Xbox method, here's where the X comes in. I do my, I draw my X and I ask myself, when I, when I do my X, I'm going to cross multiply. So 2 times 5, 2Z times 5 will give me 10Z. Z times 6 will give me 6Z. And here, this is where the number 17Z comes into play. I ask myself, can I add or subtract any of these numbers together to give me 17z? And the answer is no, you can't add or subtract this to give you 17. So these lottery numbers lose. So I'm gonna cross this out. The next lottery numbers are 15 and two. So when I try this, two z times two gives me four z. Z times 15 gives me 15 z. Will 15 and four ever give me 17? And the answer is once again, no. So this doesn't work either. So we're kind of playing a guessing game right now, but it's a finite number of guesses, so don't be too scared. 2z times 3 will give me 6z. z times 10 will give me 10z. 10 and 6 don't work because that will give me 16. That doesn't give me 17. Oh, snaps. None of these numbers work. So where did we go wrong here? Well, we didn't go wrong. We just chose the wrong numbers. So let's try it again. I have 2z and z because I ran out of space here. Um, I had up here 6 and 5, I'm going to write 5 and 6. I had 15 and 2, I'm going to try 2 and 15. I had 10 and 3, so I'm going to try 
three, and ten. So I flip it upside down to see if these lottery numbers will win. So when I do X method, I get 12Z and 5Z. So 2Z times 6 gives me 12Z. Z times 5 gives me 5Z. Can I add or subtract these numbers to give me 17Z? But am this is it. 12Z plus 5Z does give me 17Z. So these are my winning lottery number tickets. So, so these two numbers, this 5 and the 6, will give me, when I cross multiply, will give me 17Z. So this is where, so I'm going to ignore everything else here. Because I found my lottery tickets, I could stop there. So what I'm going to do is, this is X. Now I'm going to box it. So let me write this down. Find factors of first and th third numbers. So these are your lottery numbers. Um, cross multiply, or in other words, do that X that we just did to find out which lottery, lottery quote unquote, and this is Nancy Layman's term, so you will never see this in a textbook, which lottery numbers will add or subtract to give you the middle term. So I'm just summarizing what I just did right here. Great. All right, so once you find those winning lottery numbers, what you're going to do is now you're going to do the box. Because we just did X, now we're going to do box. So what box is, is it just helps you to organize your work. So kind of like a, um, you know, you spent so much time shopping for the right gift for your, your friend or whatnot, and now you just need to gift wrap it up in the right way. So to box it, I'm going to draw a box here and a box here. So this just tells me that to factor this polynomial, my answer is going to be written in this order. So to factor this, my answer is going to be 2z. It's hard to write and do the camera at the same time. 2z plus 5 times z plus 6. And there you go. We have just successfully factored this trinomial to get to these factors. And again, how we got there is we found the factors of 2z squared, the factors of 30, so that we had a bunch of choices. We do x, we cross multiply, we found out which, which combination of numbers will add up to give me 17z, the middle term. Once we find those winning lottery numbers, we just box it up, nicely gift wrap it, and this is the answer. All right, so I'm gonna do another example here with a minus sign just to make sure that you guys get this. So I'm gonna do the Xbox method. I noticed there's three terms. So again, I'm gonna use Xbox method. So it's already in standard form, the highest exponent down to the lowest. So I look at three Y squared. Two numbers that give me three Y squared are three Y times Y. Two numbers that'll give me five is one and five or five and one. Now notice there's a negative sign here. So that means one of these are gonna have an it has to have a negative in order to multiply to give me negative 5. But I'm going to ignore the negative sign right now, and I'm going to think about that later. But I know one of them is going to give me a negative. I'm not sure which one, because we want a negative 5. I want these two to multiply to give me negative 5. So I'm going to do my x right here. So when I do my x, I'm going to cross multiply. Get 3y times 5 will give me 15y. y times 1 will give me y. And I ask myself, what com will any combination of this adding or subtracting give me 14y? And the answer is yes. If I have 15y, if I have a minus here, 15y minus y will indeed give me the 14y, which is what I want. So ta-da, I found my winning lottery number tickets. So here, 15y, so I want 3y times 5y to be 15, but I want this to be a negative y, so therefore I need y times a negative one. So remember I mentioned earlier that one of them is going to be negative and we didn't know which one? Well now we know which one because 3 times y is 15, y times negative one is negative y. So that's why when you subtract these you get your middle term and you know the negative goes right here. So I don't even need to worry about these other lottery tickets because I already found my winning ones. Alright, so now it's time to gift box our answer. So here I'm going to box this. So my answer then, when I factor this, my answer is simply 3y, so 3y minus 1 
times y plus 5. This is your answer. And I always, always recommend, especially on an exam, to check your work. You don't have to wait for me to grade it for you to know whether you did it right. How you check it is you just multiply these, these through and see if you get this, what you first started off with. If I multiply this by distribution, notice that I get 3y squared plus 15y minus 6y minus 5. Combine these two like terms, I get 3y squared plus 9y minus 5. But damn. Oh, just kidding. 15 minus 6 is 9. That doesn't work. Just kidding. 3y times y is 3y squared. 3y times 5 is 15. Oh, here it is. I made my, my mistake. So I saw this. I'm like, wait a minute. What happened? Negative 1 times y will give me a negative y, not negative 6y. So it's negative y minus 5. So when I add these two together, I get 14y. So just kidding. 3y squared plus 14y minus 5. And now, badam, this one is what we first started off with. Right. So that was helpful for me to check it as well. And just make sure when you check it, you do the right math as well. So this is your final answer.